Okay, so inheritance. Um, <coughs> so inheritance, I think if you probably, I mean, you may not already know this, but um, you have already used that in the first day of, of class uh, when you write your first line of statement of your code, right? Because um, everything in Java is um, a special class that is inherited from the object class, which is the uh, main object class or main class that is uh, inherited by all other subclasses in Java. So we also when you write your own class, uh, your class is also um, I mean automatically inherited from the object class. Okay, so that's the, um, the main class in Java. So every every object, everything you see in Java is, um, is, is some sort of an object that is part of this big object class. Okay, so uh, things like the string, the object, option pane, you've been using the scanner, um, the integer type, the, uh, all those types are part of the object class. Um, so the inheritance is what's called a is a or is a relationship. <clears throat> so we talked about a little bit about the has a relationship versus the is a or is a relationship here. Okay, so in object oriented programming uh, methodology, this term means inheritance. Okay, so if you think about, oh, this will keep showing up. <clears throat> the is a relationship is like a you know a child and a parent or um, superclass in a subclass relationship. That means like if you think of a, a car or if, you know. Uh, the, a tree or something like that, right? And the book gave an example about uh, the tree uh, versus an evergreen tree type of tree. So the tree is a very general class. That would be what's called a super class or the parent class or also referred to as the base class. And then a subclass of that would be the evergreen tree, right? So we can say an evergreen tree is a tree, right? But a tree is not an evergreen tree, right? It may not be, right? So you can't say the other way around. Uh, so when you say the is a relationship, we refer to the subclass uh, inheriting the parent class. So therefore, it is uh, it has that relationship there. <coughs> okay. Um, so this is some facts or some um, description about inheritance. Or well, in this case, we have that child and parent re uh, relationship there. So inheritance is a one way proposition that means that a child inherits from a parent and not the other way around okay so you have uh, that relationship there and super classes okay, this is another term for parent class or the base class these are smaller usually in smaller in size because they're more um, more general and then the subclasses are much larger in size in terms of code as well as uh, properties and methods because they inherit everything uh, that the parent has and then plus their own methods and properties. So if you look at it, it's actually it's much larger in size than the superclasses, okay? And um, there are more subclasses are more specific, <clears throat> right? If you think a tree is a very general class, but evergreen is very specific to a certain type of tree, okay? Same thing with cars, right? Car is very general, but if you say a Mustang, it's a type of car, okay? So it's very very specific. Um, <clears throat> so two classes. Okay, so far you learn how to create classes and, you know, many classes and how you can uh, use them and call them in your code, uh, but you haven't learned about how to connect those two classes together become <coughs> to, ha to have or to establish this uh, relationship here. So two classes can inherit each other, but they cannot, I mean, they, can, they cannot inherit each other directly. So, for example, um, a car cannot <coughs> inherit a, a motorcycle class a motorcycle cannot inherit a car class at the same time. So it, it's, there's no two-way direction there, right? So it's a one-way uh, direction only, okay? So you cannot have what's called a loop or a circular inheritance, okay? That's not legal, that's not allowed in Java in most object-oriented languages, okay? So for example, like a child cannot be a parent of his own father, right? That would be weird. Um, <laughs> I mean, in the real world, <laughs> you can't do that, right? Okay? Okay, so uh, that's that's not legal. A subclass, sorry. Yeah, that works, right? A subclass cannot inherit more than one superclass. Okay, so that means um, that's what it means, right? A car cannot be both a plane and a uh, another object, another class, right? There's only one. Um, 
So in other words, there's no such thing as a hybrid class in Java. You cannot have one object uh, having two parents. Okay, uh, that's not possible. Um, so that's these are some rules about uh, classes and the inheritance. <clears throat> the book talks about the UML. I also want to just again talk a little bit about this one here because it is very uh, useful in terms of uh, helping you to you know construct your classes and uh, you know construct this relationship between classes. Okay, so the UML is a really quick way to help you to construct your code. Okay, it's another way to use um, instead of the uh, pseudocode, right? You can use both. That's even better. So there's some rules about UML uh, diagrams. You can read more about it here on the main site, UML.org. And um, but basically, these are used to um, show inheritance composition. We did that with the bread and sandwich class. Okay, uh, aggregation is another one. Dependency is, and there are a few more. Okay, but but usually in programming, uh, this probably these three here are probably more, or maybe these four are very very common in object oriented. <coughs> okay, um, so the composition and aggregation. Uh, this is what's called an has a model. Let me just bold that. Versus the inheritance is is a model. Okay, <coughs> so, so that single word is and, and has makes it a different uh, model. So a composition is like the one we saw here um, in the uh, exercise or well, unit four project, right? So we see that the bread class <coughs> and the field here, we have two objects of type bread and sandwich. Okay, so in the UML diagram, when you draw a composition, you would draw the solid line attack con connecting these two classes or more if you have more classes. And then you would put a solid diamond shape in this class. <coughs> so that means that this sandwich class is composed of the bread and the sandwich filling class. Okay, so it has, so the sandwich class has bread and filling. So that's why we have the word has a relationship. Okay, um, <coughs> and then that's how you would draw the diagram. So when you see this, when the programmer sees this diagram, they know exactly what that is. Okay, <coughs> and so it shows that, right, the sandwich class is composed of or contains or has okay, objects of both sandwich and the bread. So this is a has a. And if you look a bit more down here, in a composition, typically you would think of a, um, a class that has these two sandwich and bread class. So that means that without the sandwich, really, you would not have these bread and the sandwich. They would not exist. So they can't exist without the sandwich. Okay, that's usually a very common um, uh, <coughs> concept in, in a composition. That's the broader uh, um, example here. But there's another one is more very specific, more specific uh, type of composition. It's called the aggregation type. Okay, aggregation is in, in the case where, um, let's just say here, <coughs> it's a composition, but if the sandwich is not doesn't exist. Even though it doesn't exist, it means both of these classes can still exist on their own. Okay, you can the both will still work. Uh, that's what it means in the aggregation. Okay, whereas the other one would be if this if this if there's no sandwich, then therefore there's no bread and no sandwich filling. So like I have in the book um, in the note here saying, if a department, right? So a department, a business has many departments. But if there's no business, then therefore there's no department, right? That's the uh, typical term for composition. Aggregation is kind of the same thing, except that if there's no um, the main op main class, then the other subclasses, um, the other two um, classes can still exist. So uh, if a class contains one or more members <coughs> of another class, but when that object contains um, uh, no longer exist, then those members will still continue to exist. So if you think about the business and departments, right? So if a business or department is closed, the employees will still continue to exist. Okay, so they can go to a different class or a different 
different job, right? If you think about the concept, then uh, that's what aggregation means. Okay. <clears throat> so again, back to the inheritance. Again, it's a, it's a model, and when you draw that in a diagram, it will look something like this. Okay. It's usually from top down, um, <clears throat> and then the parent class will be in the top, and then the child is below. Uh, of course, it doesn't have to be that way, but it's just the uh, the important thing is the arrow key, the arrow uh, line here. So it's a line you draw from the child class to the parent class with the arrow. That means the child class is a subclass of the parent class. Okay, so it inherits everything in the parent plus its own properties and methods. Okay, so that's that's inheritance. Um, <clears throat> so some common keywords you will hear <coughs> are like the parent class it's also called a base class and super class okay they all mean the same thing thank you okay so we hear <coughs> we hear those terms that's what it means the, the parent class and then the child class um, is also called the uh, derived class or the subclass okay uh, but in Java, usually most programmers would prefer to use the word super, uh, like super class and subclass, uh, because in the code, as you see later in the constructor, there's a special keyword called super, where you would uh, reference the super class or the base class <coughs> constructors, okay, or not just constructor, but uh, the methods as well, belonging to the parent class. So that's why they prefer to use the word super, but I mean, you can use any, any term, it's fine. Okay, so um, <coughs> extending a class. So you, we, when you create this inheritance, uh, you will use the keyword extends. Okay, again, it's plural. Uh, <coughs> you extend the parent class or the super class. So here, in example, I have two classes. This is the super class called vehicle. <coughs> so the vehicle class has about one, uh, two, three properties and then just a single method here for example okay and this is a subclass this subclass called cars that extends the vehicle class okay so you put those keywords there in the um, class definition class header <coughs> so we say class car extends vehicle I mean, just like a regular English sentence right um, so you cannot again you cannot extend two classes so you cannot say car extends vehicle uh, comma, uh, you know, uh, other class. Okay, there's only one. <clears throat> so when this um, is running, when, when you run this in the code, then this car class will have access to everything in here, all of these, plus everything in the uh, in the car class. So you have the best of both worlds, pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> And so when you write the program in your code, uh, so you will say car, the car class here, and then you new car, and you set the method. Notice I have the car.set method here. It's calling uh, this method in the vehicle class, even though there's, it doesn't have this method inside the car, because then now they're almost like being treated as one class. So you can reach over from the uh, child class to the parent class and access all these methods in here uh, as if you would think that this method is inside the car class. So I could use car.set make and set up to a Ford. And this model here is also a variable or field inside the parent class up here. Okay, you can also access that as well. Okay, um, I probably, well, in this case, I should have probably um, make this into, um, well, if this is private, it shouldn't work. We have to test it later, and then you can print the uh, <coughs> information out. So, so in the code here, you can't tell the difference. And the change or well, the what you see it is very, very you know, um, just like a regular class you've been using so far. But in the <coughs> um, relationship here, you see that you have two separate classes, and um, so one again inheriting the other class. Okay. Um, so let's see. OK, 
okay, before I <coughs> go here, this is another operator called the instance of, a special keyword here, and you use this to um, kind of tell you or, or check the object to see if this object is an instance of another of a different class or a, a, tip, a particular class, right? So how do you know that the car is actually an object of the car class? Assuming that in this case we know because we instantiate that here, right? So if your code is really, really uh, complex and you're passing this object around, then you may not know what this car object is, is um, you know, um, part of <coughs> which class. So you can check it by using this instance of uh, operator. So you can say, is car a copy or instance of the car class? If it is, then you will have the value of true. Okay, otherwise it would be false. Now, the car is also an instance of the vehicle because the vehicle is the parent class of the car, so therefore it's also true, okay, in terms of inheritance. But if it is a boat class, then car is not a copy of the boat class, so therefore that's false. So you can use that to check the uh, class type. So in other words, same as you checking the data type of that object, <laughs> right? Okay, <clears throat> so um, I just want to We'll um, explain that one there. Now you can also have multiple inheritance <coughs> here, meaning uh, not the child but the parent can be inherited by multiple subclasses. Okay, just like if you think of a parent, you can have a lot of children, right? But um, <coughs> so this is the example here. You have two classes, I mean two subclasses that inherit from the single parent class. So again, you would draw the arrow. Uh, connecting from the child, child class to the parent class this way. And you can go down the tree this way. So you have another third class down here, which is the child of the class, child class 2. Then you can draw an arrow extending from that class to this class. And so you see that, that um, hierarchy uh, design there. And you can travel up down the tree here this way. And so the um, only thing is that you cannot have, the parent class cannot access the child class uh, data. It's only the other way around. Okay, so uh, for example, you have the vehicle class, which is the super class or base class, <coughs> can be inherited by three uh, subclasses. So all these, the boat and the car and the airplane, can be of uh, type vehicle, right? So um, so a car is a vehicle, a boat is a vehicle, so it's a plane, but a vehicle may not be a car. So that's why you cannot go the other way around. So this is the is a relationship. And um, so in the uh, UML diagram, you would draw something like this. <coughs> okay, so um, I'm just going to do a simple exercise on that part. And then we will continue on. This is the unit 10. Let's create a new project. This will be chapter 10. Too high for me. Um, let's, let's be consistent. Let's re rename this to Unit 10. Refactor, rename. Okay, just in case if you're um, wondering how do you do that, okay, so you type something here. If you want to rename your, uh, your classes or your uh, project name, you just do a right click and then press the ref <coughs> select the refra refractor and then you can rename it. Okay, once you change it here, then it's gonna if you check up if you check this box here, then it's gonna update the references everywhere in your code. So if you use it in in, in your code, it'll, it's gonna automatically update it for you. So that's save you a lot of time. So that would be unit ten. Okay, and then I'm gonna create a new um, class, and we'll call this what um, vehicle is fine. So the vehicle class. <clears throat> and we can make this the parent class so I'm going to save that for now and uh, create another class and let's like in the example in the notes we'll create this the car class okay so we will save that and let's create another class <clears throat> as the main class so the main program so we call this just um, 
um, I don't know, main program class. And that should have the constructor, I mean the main, uh, the main method. Okay, so we'll start everything from here. <clears throat> so if the vehicle is the parent class of the car class, then we are going to go into the car class and extend that parent class by going to the uh, class header here and put the keyword extends, okay, plural, just like the car extends the vehicle class. So now you are, est you are establishing this uh, parent-child relationship. <clears throat> so a car is a vehicle, okay. So in the vehicle class, anything I put in here will be automatically inherited by the car class. So I could have a car class just empty like this. It would still be functional, okay? Um, it probably doesn't serve a lot of purpose, but uh, it's, it's completely legal. So let's just say in here, uh, if the car, if the vehicle is a very general class, what does it have that would um, be shared across all these subclasses? Like if you talk about cars and boats and planes, what are some properties that they all share, right? So, um, assuming that they can have like a make and model, right? So we could do that. <laughs> so we could say, um, you know, private um, string make <coughs> the car make and model again with the um, private string model, and maybe a year as well. So we could have these three types of fields <clears throat> and then we can create those on uh, the set us and get us in here so quickly just go to right click and then go to source and generate set us and getters just check them all so we can create that really quickly so those are my set us and getters down here <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to do the constructor, let's just leave it as it is. So I'll be using the default constructor um, that Java provides. Okay, so now this car class is empty, <clears throat> but because it in, in extends the vehicle class, then it will ac have access to all of these uh, properties and these methods here. So if you go to the main program here and Let's just say we want to create a car object. Um, <laughs> let's call it uh, car lowercase, right? Of new type car. Okay. So the car will be extended, I mean, created inside the car class and then <clears throat> have access to the, the parent class as well. And if you want to add, you know, the make and model of the year for this car, then you can just do like you normally did before, right? Car dot, and then you can see that I have set <coughs> the car make model and year all here. So they will, you, so the the um, functionality is is just like a normal class. So let's say make will be like a Ford. Okay. And car dot set model will be this is a Mustang here, and then we can set the year to I don't know, fifteen sixty six. Classic car, <clears throat> and then now we can print it out, right? <clears throat> you can print it out here. Um, again, I just want to make sure because I want to write a public static void print OBJ, and we will print that in here OBJ dot two string, and that will print <coughs> for us.
So now if you want to print it out, you would just go print the car make, right? So we want to get the make. Print car dot get model. Print car dot get year. Okay. <coughs> Just like we've been doing so far. And let's run this. And that should be printed for us just like that. All right? <coughs> As you can see, I have no um, methods and properties inside the car class. I'm using the parents' uh, data, um, properties and methods to do, for, to do it. So, uh, um, so there are no constructors because it's using the default constructors in the car class and the in the vehicle class. <coughs> a constructor, the way it works here is a little bit tricky here. Okay, so when you do this, when you inherit a parent class, when you instantiate a new car, you would think that it would go into the car class and run the constructor here and then go to the parent class and run the constructor next okay that's how you would imagine you would think but actually it would go into the parent class first and go the opposite direction when you create a constructor right so it will run it, it will it, so when you create a new car here it's a new car it's going to go into the car before it runs the constructor it's going to go into the parent class of that car class and then run the constructor from here. Okay, after the constructor is run, and then it will go back down here and then run its local constructor down here. So it goes from the top down. Even though when you create this object, you create it from the bottom up. Okay, so that's just the order of how the constructors are um, executed. I mean, to show how that really works, we can go into the uh, vehicle class and create a constructor here. So I'm going to go a, a create a public constructor called vehicle. So a, as soon as you put the vehicle constructor in here, a, you override the Java's default constructor, right? <coughs> so I'm going to say here, I'm just going to put a um, system out. So we can see that this is actually calling from the um, vehicle class. So I would say vehicle constructor. So we will see <coughs> the order. Okay. And then we'll do the same inside the car class. <coughs> and just so you know, I mean, I like shortcuts. So when you're in here, if you want to create a constructor, <coughs> you just um, put your cursor here and you press the control and then the space bar. Is it? No. Wait, how do how did I do it before? Control, um, I did it before. Construct, yeah, control space bar, right? <coughs> you see that it has constructor car here. Okay, if you just click that, it creates it for you automatically, right? Shortcuts. Um, <coughs> so you don't have to type it. And then here I'm going to copy or what I have over there, but I'm going to, well, I'm just going to retype it. So I will print here as the, the car class. Um, car um, class. All right. <coughs> so it's going to call the vehicle constructor first, prints out this line, and then goes to your back to the car, and then prints this next. OK, even though my object is instantiated in the car class. All right, and then after that, it will print out the rest of the code here. So, I save this now. <coughs> I run. Oh. Okay, I have an error. What happened? What's the error here? Um. Public. Did I do something wrong? Let's 
destroy gear. <clears throat> Terminal error. No, that's weird. Anybody have the same problem as I do? Or is it just me? In the main program, mm -hmm. when you're trying to print, um, you do an object, a string, mm -hmm. you have a integer there, I'm getting an error for syntax, maybe it's just not popping on there. So like where you're getting here, that's you have set up as an integer in your print line is for string. Mm -hmm. Oh, in here? Um, no, yeah, it, that shouldn't matter because it's going to change your object, whatever it is, to string, so that should be fine. But I think, um, let's see what that is. No point to express. <coughs> Great, so tell me where it is. Let's see, let's try it again. So vehicle here, system out print <coughs> land looks okay there for me. Um, the car class, let's find it too. It looks like it says something in that message when you try to, it like a null pointer when you try to. Mm -hmm. Well, let me comment these out and see what happens. No, it still has it. Did you have this created in your, in your code? You have the same problems I do, or is it just me? Um, the code looks fine. Well, let me deal with this. Let me just... For some reason, it doesn't like the constructor or what? Uh, let's try that again. Okay, that seems to be okay. So it doesn't like the constructor for some reason. That's been turned off. Let's turn off. You think that public string did make? No, that's No, um. That was. That's weird. Gotta solve this one, I see. <coughs> it's okay there. Um, my print statement for that car. Okay, apparently doesn't like that one. Well, let's do this. Gotta see if that if it is that print statement. Did have the issue before, but no, it still has an error. Okay, well. <coughs> Now that is strange. Okay. Let me try a different class and see what happens. Oh, uh, wait a minute. That Did you right there in the object two string has got the semicolon on the inside of the bracket? Uh, sentence 20. Got the on the Over here? No, that's not the yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that would be a syntax error. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, that's that's good. Yeah, it was working before. Let's, let's try a different one. It just this is just weird. Try the boat. Okay, I'll leave that blank, and this will be extends the vehicle class. After I add a constructor, and just like crashed on me. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, comment these out, and let's create a create a um, bolt class. It 
if I had the same problem, it's, it's something else. And I'm going to have a bolt set to make to, I don't know, for now. And see if that prints out anything. No, that still has a problem. <coughs> All right. Yeah, it could be. Let's just let's try that. That is um, very strange. <coughs> All right. Let's try again. It's okay now. So it was some issue with the uh, with, with the program. Okay, so the boat is fine. I can take this back out. Um, I'll comment these again. Um, okay. So again, I'm not gonna print the car information here. Uh, I'm gonna go back and then turn on the constructors. Just press control backslash I mean forward slash will do that comment on comment feature all right so we're back to where we were before <clears throat> so when you run this when you create a new car at line six it's gonna call the car constructor um, I mean the car class and then it's gonna go into the vehicle class first run this constructor prints that out goes back to the car and then prints its own constructor I run that constructor and runs this out so you should see uh, the order in that <coughs> uh, and that's um that way so let's see run <coughs> okay so you can see here it runs the vehicle class constructor first and then the car class right even though the car is instantiated inside the car class here and not the vehicle class okay um <coughs> So that's that's how um, that's how it works. What that means is that I don't have to have a car class constructor, right? That should still be fine, because when you run this, uh, as you will see down there, is that it will run the vehicle constructor, and then there's no constructor for the car class. So in this case, it's still going to load the default constructor provided by Java, which is the empty constructor. Okay. So I just show you how that works. <coughs> now the problem arises when you have a constructor in the car class that requires uh, a parameter. So in this case, there's no parameter, which is like uh, the empty constructor, which is fine, okay? Because when I instantiate an object this way, car with no parameter, again because again you, I just showed you that I should call the parent constructor first. Then when you have a vehicle here has let's just say um, you know the string for the car <coughs> make car and, and here I usually will say um, well now say set make and I'll pass in the make car right I call that method and you can see that in the car class has an X in there <coughs> okay so now because the rule in Java is that if you have a parent class if the parent class has a constructor, you write constructor, it has a parameter in it. Okay, <clears throat> but the rule in Java, you have to have a constructor in the subclass that will pass a parameter to the parent class. Okay, you have to have it. Otherwise, you, you won't, won't be able to, uh, to use it. So what that means is that I have to have a, a class here, uh, similar to this one here, right, so I can turn this on. And I need to pass a parameter from the car class, like um, string <coughs> name here. <coughs> so inside this class, I have to use a special keyword called super. Okay, so this is where the super comes in. Super will uh, <coughs> will um, it's a special function like this. Super means it calls the super class, which is the vehicle class constructor which is this one here okay so this one requires a parameter so therefore the car class must pass a parameter to that super class okay 
Otherwise, um, it won't let you um, uh, compile your program. So now it's it's happy. <clears throat> and this only works uh, only applies to when you have a parent class has a constructor that has one or more parameters. And then now we have a problem here because now the car doesn't have an empty constructor anymore. If you ever have, if you need the empty constructor, then you have to have an empty constructor in here, right? <coughs> and then, well, um, once you <coughs> have that, then you also need to have a constructor in the parent class. Just again, control spacebar. See if that would work, right? So, you, so the parent class must accommodate all the subclasses constructors, and that is the rule, right? <clears throat> so the super here has to be the the immediate statement after the head <clears throat> uh, of the constructor. You cannot put that below um, down here after a, a separate statement. Okay, it cannot be that. It has to be the immediate uh, statement. So it has to be here. I mean, you can have spaces, which is fine, but there's no other statements between that and the header. Okay, so I'm passing that there. <clears throat> you could also do in the car class, I mean, you don't have to have a parameter in your string in, in the head here. You could just say here, I'm going to pass to a super class the following car. You can just say, you know, um, uh, GM. You can put a, a you can put a, a string literal like that. It's fine too. So when you do that, then you don't need this, right? It's fine. Okay. As long as you pass something to the parent class that would that would um, satisfy this constructor, then then you're okay. <coughs> So if you do this way, then when you instantiate your object, so now it's happy because I'm passing no parameter to the car class, and when I call this constructor here, um, it's going to pass this GM to the parent class, and then it will call this method here, this, this constructor, and then assign that as a GM. So in this case, it would be always GM until I change it. Okay, so that is the um, rule for using the super. Um, and if you want to pass it to uh, the car class using the parameter, then you would turn this back on. Okay. And so both of these will call the same constructor and the parent because this one here has a parameter, this one here has a parameter, so therefore when I call the vehicle class constructor, it's going to call this one and not this one. Okay. To call this one, then your car class must not have that. Right. So that's just the rules for the super. <clears throat> so um, with that said, now if I run this again, it should have uh, no problem. So um, let me just go back to, um, so the vehicle class has this information here. Okay, so we have the constructor here as well. I could write another function in here. Just, uh, let's just say uh, public function to um, return the speed of the car, right? So we could just say return uh, int type. Uh, we can just say get speed. Okay, I'm not going to pass any parameter, and well, I could, I could say, um, let's say, take an in integer of sp speed, and in here, uh, which is a really simple function of just a return, the default speed <coughs> when you pass a number to that speed will be, let's just say, you know, two times speed, just any, <coughs> just a weird speed, but it's, we'll just say that. So in my main program, when I want to get the speed, 
<coughs> I can then now print um, print card uh, get speed. I need to supply the number. Let's just say you know twenty, whatever that is. So it'll be twenty times um, two, right? Twenty comes in here, and then twenty times two, so it will be forty for the speed. Okay, so you get forty. <clears throat> okay, so in this subclass, so I could now copy this parent class uh, method, copy that, and go into the car class and add that to the car as a method in the car. So I have the same construct, um, same method in the subclass or the car class, and also same in the parent class, the vehicle class. So what is this concept call? What am I doing here? Is it legal? Can I have two of the same function here in the child and the parent class? Well, the exactly same information, right? Same number of parameters, same type, same name. And here is a different method. This is two times speed. I could say the car is going to be not two, but maybe car will be three times the speed. OK? So what I'm doing here is what's called a method what over override. Okay, override. And this is subtle difference between override and overload. Okay, override means I have the same name, same parameter, right? But I can have different implementation in the body. So when you when you run this code, um, <clears throat> so like you saw earlier, that when I run this application or this run uh, this program, it, it grabs forty, or it returns forty because it's using the parents method. Now I have a local method inside the car class, the same name. It's going to use this one instead of the parent method. Okay, so it should return sixty and not forty. Okay. So see, it turns 60, right? It uses the local method first, um, <coughs> if there's one. And um, then it would um, ignore the parent method. <coughs> if I have uh, the same name, if I add another parameter here, you know, let's just say um, int, uh, maybe like uh, uh, n, right? Oh, I mean, sorry, no, I'm making it wrong. I don't want to do this. I want to go into the child class. So if I add another parameter here, uh, well, let's just let's just do it down here. To add a third function here, and I'm going to add a second parameter called int. Let me just n. So it'll be like <coughs> n time speed. Okay. So this is completely legal. <clears throat> the same name, same as the parent, right? So this one here has the same parameter. This one it doesn't. I can still use the same method here. So this is an example of what? Overload, Overload right? So those two keywords, um, hopefully you know the difference between the two. Override is exactly the same name, same number of parameters, matching exactly the same. The difference is uh, only in the implementation part here. Okay, you could be, you can do a different implementation here. The overload is yet the same name, different signature, right? So they call it signature. Then it's going to have uh, call this function, and then it has its own implementation here. So when you run this code, <coughs> here I'm using the override method. But if I want to run the other one, then you want to say 20 <coughs> and maybe like 3. I'm using the overload method, okay? Because it had different signature. All right. So I have <coughs> 60. They also have um, see both 60, 60 because 3 times 3 times 20. 
to 5, we have 60, and then that's 100. Okay? So make sure you, on, you know the difference between override and overload. <coughs> And this doesn't have to be the parent uh, uh, method. It could be a, a, another method here in the same, same class here for the um, overload. Now, if you look at this, it's, like, it's kind of confusing. So in Java, there's a special tag uh, you can use when you override, only applies to override the parent method here. Um, you can put this comment here so you know that's a method override. If you don't, then you can use this special tag called override. Because it's like a tag or it's a decorator. So we decorate, we call it, we decorate this method here with this override tag. And it doesn't do anything here, okay, nothing special. It just tells the um, compiler that this method here is, um, you're overriding this method from uh, the, the parent's method here, okay? So there exists a method called get speed and the parent and you are overriding the um, method here and this local class or this um, base um, subclass. <clears throat> so you use that for um, you know documentation as well as um, it, it actually prevents you from um, I forgot what it was, but there's another there's another reason why uh, it's it's been used to help you um, debug I forgot what exactly what it does but it, it helps you to debug as well it has kind of like check to make sure that your method um, you know matches the, uh, the the super class so let me just see if I change this to um, for example um, right so <coughs> Oh, I'm not sure if with without this will help, but yeah, it, I, I guess it does help. So if I do this, right? So it's kind of um, it, it checks that for you just to make sure that your method has to match the parent's method. Um, so I change that to it's to um, initially it was like this. I changed that to a um, string, and it did not give me the error here. If I don't put the override tag, if I put that here, right, it says it doesn't match the parent's method definition. So again, it used that to help you debug your code. Okay, just make sure you have the same um, matching parameters and so on. Okay, so that's also um, really useful for overriding your methods. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> and uh, the one we just did was refer to this keyword called polymorphism, right? Poly means you have, you have many forms. Okay, changing the form because I'm changing, I'm using a, a, a local uh, method here in here. And I'm also having the parent method here. I'm not using this one here, even though I share the same method. I am um, using my own local version here. So if the bulk class since the bulk class also extends the vehicle class, okay, and then when I extend, <coughs> when I create a new object in here for the bulk that we did earlier, right, and um, if I put again bolt, well, I'm just gonna put print here, print uh, bolt get speed, but um, you know two here. It's really slow. Right, so it's using the parent's method because in the boat class there's no method override. So it does not have its own method here. So it's going to use the parent's class method which is the get speed here. So you see that it will be turned just the number which is two. I mean four in this case, two times four. Okay, so the car car has its own method so it uses its own but the boat doesn't so the boat uses the parents method and you can do the same thing here you can add your own method here uh, you can override the parents method the same way you did uh, we did with the car here as well okay 
So just curious, what would happen if we extend not the vehicle but the car class? Can we do that? I know it doesn't make sense in this case, but let's just say we change that to a, a, the car class. Right, as you can see, everything is pretty normal, run just like it is, except you get a different value now. Six instead of four, right? Mm. You know why, or why is that? The car. In the sub, uh, in the sub, it has uh, what is that? The statement mm -hmm. where it says well, it's a multiplier return value. Mm -hmm. So it does that. It overrides. So it uses that. Yeah. So it multiplies it again. Yeah. So again, the boat is a subclass of car. So the car, it looks into the car. The car has a speed, <coughs> get speed, and it gets speed. So it, it, it inherits both of these methods, right? So when we say boat get speed of two, one parameter here is going to go into the boat class, doesn't have it. The parent class is car. Oh, there's two of them. Which one, sh which one should I use? Well, the one that has only a single parameter, it runs and run this one here, right? So in this case, it will not run the parent's uh, speed <coughs> get speed method, okay? So it goes down up the chain that way. The local first, if it doesn't exist there, then look at the parent's uh, method. Is it there or not? If there's none, then you keep moving up the chain until you find it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's how it is. So if I were to change like the vehicle, let me get speed instead of get speed, we'll get speed two, right? For the, for the parent class. And then the car class um, now has a problem because it says I'm overriding this method called speed, get speed. And there's no such thing as get speed. So because of this tag here, it gives you the error message to help you. And again, if you turn this off, then the error goes away, right? So I'm having just two local variable uh, methods here in the in the uh, car class, and the vehicle I'll change it to uh, get speed two, and then the boat. <coughs> now if I go back to the program and call get speed two, right? And put like a num like a ten here or something. Okay, so. It's gonna go go to the boat class, find get speed two, none. Go to the parent class, the car the car class, get speed two, none. Go to its parent class vehicle, and there it is, right. So it will skip the car class and goes all the way up the tree until it finds the first uh, method called get speed two, and then it will execute there. So that's where you see that it will still work just fine, except now it's calling that get speed two uh, to print that value, okay. So the chain is is it all connected like that. Uh, you can't go the reverse, but um, it's in, in in that direction. Again, so if we were to have um, <coughs> let's see if I were to like let's just say comment these out. No, um, remove that. For now. And let me just comment this out, delete that. And the vehicle class, um, let's let's delete that and then comment this out. Remove the thing here. And then inside, I'm gonna copy this one here and put into the boat class. So the boat also has its own constructor. <coughs> right, and I'll print that in here. Again, just to show you how the constructors are called from top to bottom. So when you run this, uh, well, let me turn these off. I just run the boat for now. So you will see that it will go from the top to bottom, right? This is the <coughs> superclass of the car for the car, and the car is the superclass for the boat, and down the list that way. Okay, so you always call the a super class first and goes down the list <coughs> for the uh, for the constructor. But when you call the methods, it goes the other direction. Okay, it will go into local class first, and then it runs that method if it's, if it exists there. If it doesn't go up the tree to the parent class, and then it goes that way when you call methods.
So uh, the way it works is a little bit uh, weird, but that's how it's how it is in in Java. Um, So, <coughs> what else do we have? That's polymorphism. <coughs> so again, override, overload. Make sure you know what those are. I just did that example already. Um, calling default constructor, okay. <coughs> we did that already with the vehicle and the boat and so on. And then the super class, I, uh, I think I just, um, demonstrated that with the arguments so you just have to make sure you um, accommodate all the subclasses so um, so that it works and the this versus the super okay you remember if, I'm not sure if you remember back in chapter 4 where we have an example or um, and, and maybe one of those exercises that um, allows you to like create multiple constructors inside the same class Okay, and then you just call the other constructor within the same class using the this keyword, and you pass it to the method that would um, instantiate or would actually update or initialize these parameters for you, right? So if this is the uh, main constructor here, that would accept two parameters, int on the num and then the average. Then if you call a constructor a class of student, you pass only the double then it's going to pass this two data to this constructor here to initialize with some default values like it will pass the 99 as, as a little number number and then also pass the average which is passed from the um, object <coughs> instantiation uh, code and it will pass this to the constructor to initialize if you pass in a number you do the same thing if you pass nothing then it will still force uh, this constructor up here to execute by calling this keyword here and followed by the parameters to match this constructor, right? Okay, you do just locally inside the same class. The super, that's exactly the same thing except you are using that to um, access the parent class. So that you, you're passing the parameter here to the parent class so that this parameter here, 9090, matches this constructor here and it initializes this parameter, uh, the value here to the year. Okay, so you're passing that to the parent instead of passing to another constructor in the same class. So that is the difference between the two. Okay, um, so this is an example of how you can actually access uh, the super class methods. Okay, you can do that as well using the keyword super and then followed by the dot and then the name of that method. So here we have two two um, classes. <coughs> the customer is the parent, and then the uh, preferred customer is the subclass. And so down here, so we have the um, the parent has <coughs> a display method. The child class has a display method as well with the keyword override here. So we're overriding the parent's method. Inside this display method, we are actually going to call the parents method to run the code here by using this super dot display mat display method here, right? So you're calling the method in the parents class. You run what's inside here. Then you exit out, come back here, and continue on down the list of statements. Okay, so you're running two con two methods here. Actually, you'll do a method called call, but you're calling that a local method here, you're calling a parents method. Okay, so um, <clears throat> within our example, we can do exactly the same thing. So here, I'm calling, like when I create the uh, the boat, I can go back to the boat here, and if I put the boat <coughs> just a speed of 10, it's gonna go into the boat, does it have here, go to the car, well, let me change this back to just speed. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. You can call it speed two is fine. Um, in the in the car class, when I call the speed here, it's going to do like <coughs> I could say no. Um, set another variable here. Just say int uh, i. And I'm going to call this super class method in the car the vehicle class using super 
dot get speed two. Okay, I'm gonna pass the same speed here, which is whatever it is from the car, to that method, and return a new parameter, a new value to the i. I can say three times um, put i here, for example. Right? So I'm calling a different method. This is just same as saying I can call the get speed down here. Same as saying get speed uh, down here. I mean, what we call this super class. <clears throat> so uh, if I run this now, um, 10 goes into the car's method get speed. So 10 comes in here. And then it's going to call this line 10 is passing to the super class method called get speed 2. Out here, get speed 2 receives 10. 10 comes in here, multiply by 2, so returns 20. Back to the car. So i is now 20. And then 20 times 3 is now 60. Right? So we get 60 back. So um, that's what we get 60 down here. Okay, so you can call a parent construct uh, a method by using the spe the super uh, super um, keyword. However, you cannot call like um, you know what if what if like I have this method in the in the car, I mean in the boat. If I have it here, <coughs> right? And what if I want to call like this and then call this so can I say super 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 right you, right so so you can't do that I cannot call super dot you know super dot super like that right you, you, you can't go up the tree like that right you just call only once one super to the parent the immediate parent class and then um, run that okay so um, as you can see it should still work because it looks into the boat class call that super speed to looks in the main class the car class doesn't have it then it's going to go up the chain up here and it will call that super 2 from the upper class <coughs> okay so that's um <coughs> how you call a um superclass method not just method you can also call the um, parameter as well the field as well everything up there now information hiding or protected access modifier this one here we haven't used before right we use the pr private in the public okay so the protected is usually used for inheritance what that means is that if you if you declare a, a method or a field with the keyword protected that means that only um, these three things here are true. <coughs> okay, uh, with the protected field, that means you can only access that class um, or that method or the member field within the same class. That's true. Um, <coughs> you can also call from within the subclass regardless of the packages again packages refer to um, these over here so again we use a default package but I could have something like um, I think we had earlier like different packages um, I don't see here maybe the unit 9 right so I have a default package I have the chapter 8 x7 package this got just different packages just different directories basically <coughs> so if they're in the same uh, package then you can still access them if you're a, a subclass right a subclass means it has inheritance okay if you're in a separate class <coughs> that is not a, a um, inherited class but you have the same package then you can still access those data as well okay the only time when this doesn't work is well, I mean, well actually when it works is if you are accessing a data from a different package, right, then that will fail. And I will, I will show you what that means by that. The time now. Okay. Yeah, um, let's take a 10 minute break. We'll come back and we'll, oh, I'll show you we'll, um, what this means 
using the protected field instead of the private and the public. Okay, so <coughs> I'll see you in about um, 10 minutes.